Welcome back, everybody. Once again, you're listening to The Entrepreneur Web. I'm your host, Jeremiah Fox, here with my guest, Josh Margolis. That was really lovely, yeah. that track. I listened to that. Uh, you Thank want you. to talk about that? It was really, really I fantastic. definitely want to talk about Let's that. Let's talk about that. Um, so uh, that's Old Sweet Way, uh, written by my daughter, Matilda, and her dear friend, Joe Mintz. Um, they did a songwriting program this summer in LA that was uh, run yeah. by Berkeley School of Music. Mm -hmm. um, and they came up with that, you know, really pretty quickly in a couple of days, the song was kind of start to finish. Um, and they found a terrific kid, um, Bennett, out there to, uh, who had a home studio mm -hmm. and he recorded it. So that's what you're hearing is all kids, essentially. It's amazing. No adults. Fantastic. Um, and I just think it's a terrific song and I'm so proud of all of them yeah. for putting it together. Absolutely. Um, it's, it's definitely um, a huge goal of Gowanus Music Club to encourage songwriting mm -hmm. and to talk to them about that process, um, introduce them to people who are doing that kind of thing. I'm a composer and songwriter going way back. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, um, yeah, it's interesting um, after you left uh, Della the other night. I don't know if you followed up with Mark Friedman. Who, Not much. Who no. gonna give a, we, he, we texted each other. I'm going to give a giant shout out to yeah, Mark. Yeah, what's up, Mark? You we, should be watching this, Mark. We, we love Mark. And Mark and I talked a little bit about, um, well, you have all these talented kids and they're, they're coming up through your program and you're actually a talent development company, he says to me. And I just was like, boing. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Um, and I've always wanted to provide an avenue for the kids to write songs and ultimately release mm -hmm. those songs onto Spotify or Apple, or whatever. Yeah. Um, so we're sort of in the, you know, baby stages of talking about how to do that and possibly even creating a GMC label, mm -hmm. um, which would be amazing. Cause Absolutely. it's dreaming, dream, dream, mm -hmm. dream big. Um, <clears throat> so I just feel like I wanted to, you know, play that song um, on the podcast to, show people that wow like don't ever under underestimate somebody because of mm -hmm. their age Absolutely, um, yeah. because old the, or young <laughs> old or young because <laughs> gotta plug it for us <laughs> <old> guys <laughs> these kids um as you and i both know as brooklyn parents are very sophisticated and they listen to everything and they know how to express themselves yeah. at a very high level yep. um I, I just believe in all the talent that I see coming through the mm. program. And at this point, we've had over a thousand kids come through wow. GMC. Um, when, what year did it start? Started uh, our 14th year. So what would that be? 2005. And do you do you Six. care to talk about how it got started? Like oh, sure. part of the you know part of the show <clears throat> is definitely like we we're talking about empowering. Like we're talking about empowering kids, like mm -hmm. teaching them. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I experienced the same a lot of uh, teaching martial arts to kids. You know, right we on. don't expect them all to go out and be like, right. we want, we hope none of them are like MMA fighters, but like, hopefully none of them are like using that skill necessarily <laughs> on a, on a, a negative even, way yeah. or, or even just like any basis. Like hopefully you never yeah. need this, but here it is. But it's really about empowering. And the same for you. I feel like not all of your, your students are going to go off and be like full-time musicians or no. anything like that. No, But taking them <clears> through that process and showing them this is how you accomplish things. This is how you accomplish a goal, like from beginning to end, like sure there's some mentorship, but like, I think it's a remarkable what your daughter and their friends pulled off that way. I mean, it's like really, that was not available to me mm. as a kid at all, mm. you know, and, and I dreamed about it, but it just like was not available, which is great because it made me a very motivational person. Mm. But also we want to inspire like guys our age who are like, maybe they hate what they're doing. And it's like, how, how like I've, I've got this thing we'll get this i have like this this <laughs> i have a hobby of monetizing my hobbies <laughs> i don't know how i still haven't like broken down the process it just keeps happening but it's like it keeps happening um which is fantastic it's awesome it's yeah, really awesome fantastic. but uh yeah. sam the uh the executive producer here just kind of pointed it out to me a couple weeks ago he's like you really like have a hobby of monetizing your hobbies i'm like ooh, that's good um, so, so if you don't mind just taking a few minutes to talk about how, like you were, you were doing like music catalog writing and like BMI stuff. Prior, yeah. I was right? composing a lot for one particular library, mm -hmm. uh, that's really done well for me over the years. You um, want to just tell people like what that means exactly for like the not like 
Kev, Kevin would understand. Sure, sure. Might sure. Know what's going on here. Um, so one of the ways um, musicians can make a buck um, is to write what's called underscore music mm -hmm. for uh, music libraries. And these are giant sort of catalogs of different kinds of music that a television producer can quickly listen to a, ver a variety of genres and say, oh, this fits perfect underneath the interview segment with it's like Andre. The Amazon for like production company, right? Yeah. It's just like you get this whole list yeah. and you just listen, listen, click, click, click. I want that one. Right. Yeah. And I remember when I started, I just was like, oh, well, if you can't beat them, join them. Because my yeah. idea was always that, oh, it has to be perfect and you're going to compose right. while you're watching right. the film. And it's like really not that way anymore. Right. Um, so I did hundreds of these tracks, um, with my friend, Julian Harris, shout out to Julian, amazing guy. Um, and they get played like all over the world every year recycled. Right. And it's, it's a really nice. And you get like a little fee for like every time it's get used checks from BMI. Yeah, yeah. Sure. And it's great. So yeah. how did you transition from that? into right like the unknown <laughs> well yeah i mean you know it was interesting time in my life i had been doing that for maybe 10 15 years and and i enjoyed it and done it really you know fully um my wife and amy uh we had uh, matilda in 19 what, sorry 2003 excuse me um when was my daughter born um that's what, that's and, what i have <laughs> and you know like you and many hopefully every parent in the world uh you know we just fell in love with our daughter mm -hmm. and it was like whoa like children like what's that and um yeah i i became sort of tilly's primary um you know, that was the dude who picked her up from school mm -hmm. and yep, same hang here. out with her in the afternoon because I could do it. My wife right. was working full time at that point. Um, and I just had this moment where the more I was in this windowless studio working with maybe one other person by myself, um, as I'm sure you felt a million times, like I just had this itchy kind of feeling like there's something more like I was raised to do yeah something bigger than this i don't mm -hmm. know what it is and um as Faye would have it somebody recommended me to teach uh, a kid on the upper west side drums and i was reluctant but i did it and i met his family were you not teaching much no i wasn't yeah. teaching at all and the family was great and um the mom took a shining to me and said hey our son has a band and would you consider teaching the band and so one thing led to another and suddenly i was teaching one band mm -hmm. And my wife was like, this is cool what you're doing. It's, it's really touching a lot of things financially, spiritually, emotionally. Right. Um, you have to dig deep to do this and go outside of your comfort zone, which we which all is, are trying to do every day. Right? And is a huge part of that right. growth and process. Right. Like if you want to stay in your comfort zone mm. and just have somebody else do everything for you, mm. you don't get to scratch that itch. Right. Really. If you scratch it, though, you know, but there's also a really great quote that pressure makes diamonds, you know, and right on all of that. And, and think yeah. the other thing that I don't want to forget to say in, in this moment yeah, is that I had a, an amazing drum teacher growing up, mm -hmm. um, a guy named Conrad Kaufman, who was a jazz drummer who turned me on to every kind of music, taught me how to play jazz drums at seven, eight years old. Um, and I never, ever will forget the impact that that had on me. Um, and I think that was maybe the itch. It mm. was like I had kind of this kind of second dad almost yeah. in my life, not realizing it. Um, and, you know, at a certain point, like, what can I do to give that all back, that mm -hmm. incredible love that Conrad put into me? How can I put that back into some other young kid and so it's really this lovely kind of um reflective thing in life i guess it's like where... the lion king yes <laughs> kumbaya <Yeah. laughs> yes exactly so um i just felt like there's there's the itch that's what's been bothering me um how can i give back how can i impact the world in a bigger place in a bigger way excuse me right um and i started to find that through meeting these kids and teaching them and i just it suddenly became this really like 
hardened mission in my life. It, uh, you know, it just was like, I have to do this. It's really important for me to share all the knowledge that I can, because I, I've been schooled by a lot of different great instructors. Um, and that rolled into it being a school. Uh, I met Tracy early on in that process, Tracy Bonham, and Tracy had sort of similar inclinations. Mm -hmm. So we would have coffees and talk about how we're going to do this. And we rolled it out and it stuck. You know, I was maybe the, one of the first uh, contemporary music schools in Brooklyn to do this. Right. And that was Especially a lot of Gowanus. it. <laughs> yeah. Like no man's land. <laughs> right. I mean, I just was like, I want to pick the dirtiest, stinkiest place. You I found can. it. <laughs> you know, again, in the interest of like, sort of saying to these kids, this isn't glamorous. Yeah, you're not right. going to be a rock star, right. but you're going to work hard and you're going to really have fun. Or like most rock stars, this, this is what it takes on the back end. It's yeah. just like yeah. lots of hard work. It's, yeah. We all see that little bit. And I got, you know, I was starstruck too. I was like, oh, it's amazing. I want to do this, you know? Yeah. And then I started in and I was like, this is a lot of work and sometimes like really awful. Like you were, you were in a dark room kicking out like corporate stuff. I was doing it on a stage. Right for uh for bands that you know we're we're hustling the same thing for right. that money and right. uh it it uh it was the same empty feeling you yeah know? yeah so eventually i just was like i'm gonna let go of the engineering and mm -hmm. producing you know i didn't really feel like that's always going to be a part of my life and i continue to do right. that yeah but it's you know gowanus really started to take over and it and it's you know just blossomed and you know, we're doing shows at Joe's Pubs these days is, and yeah. Rockwood Music Hall, like both incredible yeah. venues. Um, we were we take them to the recording studio, um, workshops, you know, all kinds of stuff is happening. But, but one important step, <clears throat> you, you guys got some money somehow, right? <laughs> Didn't no, you say that? No, funding? not really. No, no. okay. I, I mean, the one ace in my pocket that I had, getting back to dad and heads um he um set me up with uh, a lawyer in his firm okay uh that essentially uh explained to me how to create an llc right. which is what gowanus is and it's, it's strange you have to put an ad in the paper which was the most expensive part of doing it so really it cost me about a thousand dollars for the llc yes in new york it's some kind of blue law in New York State. Oh, maybe um, I had to do it. I just maybe my partner took care of that because we I've got yeah, yeah I've been a part of a bunch of them. Yeah, I don't remember having <clears> to do it for the food co-op. Interesting. Maybe they might have gotten rid of that. Mm. Yeah, I hope so. It shouldn't be that hard, and it, yeah. it certainly locks out um, people who don't have you know a thousand bucks, and there are plenty of great right. minds who can't afford Some that gatekeeper shit right there. <clears throat> yeah, so let's open that up to everyone. Um, and, you know, I was in the sense, you know, my dad was a lawyer, I didn't have to pay the legal fees. Um, and I was kind of off and running. And it's a, vir it's a virtual uh, storefront, right? I rent studios on the hour. Yeah. Um, so that was helpful as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of figured out my business model. My sister was running a yoga studio at the time, I think I told you. Yeah. And it was a similar model. You hire your teachers, you have a space, yeah. you go. And that's it. All right. I don't need tons of infrastructure or yeah, investors not, not i didn't want guitars i didn't want business. any of that i didn't yeah. want to be a non-profit i didn't want to answer to a board mm, um yeah. you know i'm <laughs> like you be <laughs> stubborn like, yeah, yeah just like this is my vision i stubborn well you know <laughs> that's a whole other discussion we yeah. can get into later but yeah cool all right everybody <laughs> we're going to take one more quick break we'll be back with you in a few you're listening to the entrepreneurial web